Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com, Monday, you know, January 23rd, 2023. Um, so I finished the, you know, progressive and extreme metal albums list videos last week. I did the, I finished the actual, um, finished, the, finished the list and published it well over a week ago, but, um, Anyway, so next on the or the agenda, I mean, there's a lot of stuff on the agenda on the the schedule, the projection for stuff to do, um, is the Kevin Gilbert songs list. Um, so I have it here pulled up um, on Rate Your Music. I'm gonna definitely want to put this on the blog and um, anyway, Instagram, of course. Um, one thing I can note is the Kevin Gilbert estate announced. A couple weeks ago, there's a shaming of the true CD that's a gatefold that I ordered, and I think I'm going to get in today, so maybe I'll do a, a video showing that tomorrow, maybe. Um, and their plans for 2023, including the Beard Jam, Beard Jam, the KMG Archive Volume 3 and 4, there's going to be a total of six, I guess. One of them is going to be um, the Caviar, I believe, the Caviar Extended, which is going to be great for people that love caviar. You know, so talking about Kevin Gilbert, of course, caviar, some stuff caviar is in here. I mean, Kevin Gilbert, of course, had many different bands, and I counted, you know, in terms of total albums, and I did my rank, and I did one through nine, but if you include the Call Me Kai, you know, albums, and then if you actually separate Nuts and Bolts, he has a total of 13 studio recordings with either bands it was primary his primary member of or his solo releases um of course he was part of eddie money's band he recorded a little bit with him he worked with michael jackson and madonna some engineering spock spear long list um susanna hoffs he worked on her second album uh linda perry it's a long list but um i'm just talking about his own music no two is not in here either because he didn't sing and that's still not his primary music although it is notable that Robert Ferris, um, you know, friend of his, wrote a number of the co-wrote or wrote a number of songs on that he did. Um, he's kind of quiet, unfortunately. The Kevin Gilbert podcast um, YouTube channel slash podcast. You are here. They just uploaded a preview of the stuff they're going to be doing. That's what I was alluding to. Uh, in 2023, what they're looking to release. They are looking to finish the, sh the shaming of the true multi-disc, although that, the time frame's still unclear. And they're going to be hopefully putting up more of the music for streaming and download, like the Giraffe albums, maybe, and some live stuff, maybe. Um, like Caviar, I would hope. And Nuts and Bolts. People are looking for that. They can't find it. Um, but anyway, so there's a lot of stuff going on in the, the world of Kevin for Kevin Gilbert fans. Um, but yeah, he had a, a grand total basically of 13 at this point releases. There might be more down the road, but um, so these are tracks that either on 13 different albums or singles. Some of them are, are I think there, I don't think there's too many, you know, that include the, you know, extended versions and stuff like that too. But the other note thing is that noteworthy thing I wrote on here is, of course, he had many. I did this video a couple years ago. It was last year. Oops, I didn't mean to pull that up. Um, where I went over a lot of them. Many songs have been recorded by multiple groups or multiple versions. It's like a total of 43 or something. Versions are with lyrics that were alluded. It's not maybe total 43 total, but it's close to that. It's a lot. Um, anyway, let's just get going here. So, number 75, Waking the Sun. And I didn't put down, like, some of these songs are found on multiple. I didn't allude to them on these, but anyway, it's found on Bolts. It's a, it's a good song, you know, song I enjoy. Not the best song, but, you know, it's a decent track. Um, anyway, from that period when he recorded it, probably like in the early 90s. Uh, number 74, no Re from No Reasons Given, Suitcase Living. There's another version on one of the Call Me Kai's, I believe. But um, the, the NNRG version is the one I'm kind of leaning toward a little bit more. Um, that debut album he worked on in high school that re got released in 84. Uh, number 73... Terpsichorean um, off of Mixed Bag, which Terpsichorean, part of that ended up on the title Man Suite, too, but the instrumental version I like a lot, too. Uh, that was on the fourth disc or fourth album on the Call Me Kai box a couple of years ago. Uh, Souvenir from uh, Bolts, also number 72. 
See, I'm doing 75. He's got like a, I, I counted a grand total of like 120 or 130. So this is a little more than half of his catalog. You know, again, trying to separate a lot of these songs that were recorded on multiple releases and different bands even. There's also C-Spot Run, of course. So the C-Spot Run and the Shaming Multidisc will yield stuff. And I didn't really, you know, I'm like the songs that are together, I just kind of figure I'll take the definitive version slash all the different versions because there's like on the, the Thud a 20th anniversary book, which comes with those, all those extra versions. There's some better versions, I think, than the studio <laughs> versions. But I still mean to do an actual proper video. I need to. I've been listening to it again. I will do that hopefully soon. Uh, going over every track on that, you know, more detailed than I did originally when it, back in 2015. Number 71, uh, Welcome Home from The View From Here, which another song. That, I like Welcome Home. It's nice. It's a nice kind of ballad. It talks about someone being away at war and everything like that. It's it's fine. It's not amazing. It's not uplifting, but it kind of um, has that sort of gentle um, ending to sort of a, a traumatic. Because it's talking about people being away at war. Giraffe, when they were writing music, and then what he did later, he you know Kevin was very political and involving stuff with the military. And you know why are we sending people away to war? You know, and we had enough problems here at home. You know. Anyway, number seventy, while heroes cry, good track, uplifting. I like the bass line on it especially. He's got that kind of laid back feel. I mean, it has a 90s feel to it, but still a great, great vocal performance from Kevin on that. Um, but it's not as sort of busy or uh, technical or proggy as some of his. It's a singer songwriter track that really works for me. Uh, number 69, Finale. This is one of a handful. There's three or four different versions of Finale. I like this one maybe the best. You know, it's got that classic ending with the. You know, jazzy elements with a little snare, like marching snare drum rolls and everything like that. And, um, um, till we all fall down, you know, um, talk about all fall down. You know, of course, there's a song all fall down, but yeah, um, it's a great closer to that collection and some of the other w versions it got released with. Um, anyway, number 68, Taxi Ride, which, um, I believe, yeah, this is a this is the Jane Syberry cover, which I put this. There's the version, the same same thing that pretty much was released on the covers uh, release from 2020, I think it was 20, and the end of 21. Um, I, I love this. It's melancholy. It's sad. It's kind of dreamy. I, when I heard it was a cover, it kind of disappointed me a little bit. But um, there's a couple songs on that on the Bolts is a more subdued collection of tracks. But I don't know if Kevin himself necessarily intended to have them released as on one release or just it was just a hodgepodge i always got the impression a lot of times with nuts and bolts it's some of those recordings are from the same period of time but they weren't necessarily released on that disc over the other disc or whatever specifically i don't know how they decided the track track order the track list but um yeah i mean because it was a cover of course cashmere is also on that on the nuts so they want to have two covers on one i don't know if that was part of it but but yeah, the Jane Syberry version, I only listened to it once or twice, and I, I think I like Kevin's a little more, but it's a good song. Jane Syberry, there's something else about her when I was reading about this that I'd want to hear. Like, she worked with someone Kevin worked with or something like that. Anyway, number 68. Number 67, so Miss Broadway. So I have the, the studio version on the Thud Anniversary book. Um, there's also the live version off of um, Live of the Troubadour, which, you know... I have that. I haven't listened to it in ages. Of course, got the DVD. I should just do a review of that. So it's like that and the the thud. I, I still am yet to do videos for. Well, I'm doing the song list finally after how long? So I did the, the the albums one almost a year ago. But anyway, yeah, it's it's lyrical. It's about Cheryl in a lot of ways, with references and stuff like that. Um, but the relationship and what happened afterwards and stuff like that. It was I I believe some thought it would have been intended to be on the Shaming of the True. Um, because it's of course Cheryl's referenced in the Shaming of the True, but um, anyway, it's it's a decent track. I like the lyrics. I like the melody almost more. It's like more of another one of those dreamy tracks. Uh, there's an emo a, a stark emotion obviously behind it uh, when he was writing that. Um, but you know, it's sort of it's very much of its time. You know, <laughs> anyway, number sixty seven, number sixty six, uh, schizophrenia from No Reasons Given. Um, one of the funner tracks on the NRG album, from NRG, from the No Reasons Given album. Um, instrumentally, it's a little more adventurous than some of the other tracks on there, and um, 
I'm not saying this is an instrumental piece, you know, so how I end up you know, voting for songs, you know, because they, they did this on the live, the, the beer jam, I believe, as well. So, but um, number 66, number 65, Nightmares, uh, which was on Point Blank. Also, I believe, I can't remember. That might be the only version that was actually officially released at this point. This is the artwork I'm taking from the bootleg, but it's on Call Me Kai. Um, it was re-recorded by... Um, I'm, for, I'm spacing on the band that um, um, that covered it for the movie Night of the Creeps, I think it was. Anyway, um, I like Kevin's version a little bit more. Um, why am I spacing on who it was? <laughs> um, but the thing about this verse, the song, while it, it it's well arranged, it does borrow from Nino, like Nino, from almost the owner of a lonely heart, little. Um, it's not a sampling. It's like a it's like a drum loop, basically. Multiple sections. It has that. It, it's like owner of a lonely heart to tribute to it in some ways. Um, but it's Kevin is singing at a higher range, I guess, intentionally because based on listening to the the two you know archive releases from a couple months ago, um, he had the capability of singing in his natural voice before this because that was in you know the mid '80s when he did that. Um, so, uh, what's the name of that band? The, uh, the Hotels, the Motels, Martha, something from the hotel, from the Motels. Um, in fact, I could just, <laughs> I think it was, a, I don't know if it was the Motels themselves, it was Martha's solo that ended up on the soundtrack. Um, Martha Davis on the soundtrack for Night of the Creeps, um, which is a zombie movie. <sighs> not on here <laughs> anyway uh he basically sold it to them martha davis and them maybe it was the motels officially maybe i i don't want to have enough time to, i'm gonna keep on going on the list but um yeah it's a good song you know not my favorite song on among among not in the you know you'll see where it falls among all the songs on the call me kai releases in each individual on on point blank but it's a good track still even with kevin's vocal arrangement and stuff so uh number 64 sometimes why from mixed bag dreamy very dreamy melancholy track there um which is not to be confused with the songs on the sometimes why release <laughs> but um yeah I, I really enjoy in fact i think this is a little bit low i've revisited this last few weeks and probably would vote it ahead of some other songs i didn't when i did this ranking so there are always gonna be reduxes and 2.0s you know number 63 i will survive from the view from here from giraffe good song energetic kind of upbeat um not as progressive as some of the other songs on Giraffe on the View from Here, but um, yeah, I know it's a it's a it's an excellent track. I believe this album we've officially concluded actually came out in 1989, but um, you know I, I can't I can't be bothered to get anything fixed on Rate Your Music. So number 62, the Sultan of Brunei from the Caviar Sessions. This is probably my favorite track on the Caviar Sessions. You know, spoiler alert. Um, while I enjoy them, I did the review. I think I went back to revisiting some of them. Uh, I even got to hear the one that came out after without Kevin. Some of the songs. It's just it's very um, sarcastic and dark. Most of the lyrics musically, the Sultan of Brunei is nice, although it's a little repetitive. I'll admit that the the um, the phrase you know I like Kevin's vocal performance, but the actual sort of throughout the, from beginning to end the song doesn't go as far as I was thinking it, it normally would. It doesn't have like a, lo a cool bridge or something like that. It's, it has its moments, but um, and it, it, unlike some of the songs on the Caviar Sessions, I think that um, it musically stands out better. than The lyrics don't completely sort of usurp it, um, unlike some of the songs on there. Anyway, Sultan of Brunei, number 62. Number 61, Circling Winds, a song that was also on one of the Call Me Kai uh, records. Uh, great dreamy track um, kind of fits the title in a lot of ways uh, a lot of acoustic guitar it's almost like Kevin doing Yacht Rock in some ways <laughs> but um, yeah I, I enjoy Circling Ones a fair amount you know among that whole collection uh, number 61 number 60 uh, Donna Ray. now this song I think is a little lower than I would intend this is a terrifically catchy song it's very upbeat um, kind of a you know girlfriend kind of thing or some girl he admired maybe i you know it was on point blank which was released was the second one i think second or third one i forget i think it was the second one anyway 
Um, yeah, this is one of the poppiest Kevin songs, and in fact, yeah, I, I would put it probably a little higher. I mean, I do a revisit revisitation, but it's probably accurate because there's so many songs I love by him. He's my favorite. Go figure. Still number sixty. Number fifty nine. God's been tapping my phone. Version from Bolts, or you could be talking about the one that's on Call Me Kai. Um, great ballad, um, classic kind of um, almost club like you know. Although lyrically, it reminds me of someone who's sort of down on their luck and they need some help. You know, God's gonna help me out. They'll call me. They're, they've been hearing what I'm going through. You know, it's almost therapy in some ways. But it has that sort of classic singer songwriter, almost like Sinatra, or you know, with the piano arrangement and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a sad track, but it's it's a melancholy and sort of relatable in some ways. I always picture Kevin himself kind of playing the piano, doing like a Randy Newman thing and singing along in some club, like a nightclub where, you know, the girl's dancing in the in the cocktail dress or whatever. Um, anyway, number 58, you buy her a martini, that kind of thing. And he lived in Southern California, so I could see him having those experiences, going to those kind of places. A jazz club, basically. Not a loud club, but a jazz club. Uh, Song for a Dead Friend, uh, number 58. Now, people might say this is sacrilege I have it this low because this is a highly admired, highly you know, staunch, very stark, stunning track to some people. It is sad. It is super sad. The lyrics are, you know, really gentle and kind of very sympathetic. At the same time, I don't appreciate it. I don't find myself latching onto it as much as many of the other songs. That's why it's this low because... Of sort of the the feeling I get from it now, you know, compared to say like Marillion's um, "The Great Escape" or something like that, there's some music that's sort of just soaring on that, or even uh, the one after that, "Made Again" off of Brave. But um, still, it's a it's a wonderful, wonderfully sad, you know, piece of art. Like it's almost like poetry. Um, him telling the story, I believe his friend, because there's a song for Michael which is on the the Thud Deluxe, which is the same kind of thing. It's change he's changed some of the lyrics on it i believe but um someone he lost you know and you know he's with that person now i'd hope but anyway song for a dead friend you know incredibly sad in some ways you know i don't say it's overrated but you know i don't feel i should i might be underrating it so people feel like i'm underrating it but i still think it's it's about properly rated sort of in the toward the back end of his of my favorite songs from kevin um uh, mainly she likes how much I'm, i've listened to it. i listen to thought i do listen to it but it's you know, kind of, it's it's a little bit of a downer to end the album, anyway. Um, the shame, the Johnny's Life song, which is much in the same vein. That's sort of a a sad ending to the story, but because it fits within that sort of rock opera concept album, um, I you know I like it. It's very dreamy, and it's less is more in a lot of ways. Um, you know, my name is Johnny Virgil. I used to be a star, you know, you know, sometimes they play my you know, songs on the oldies radio. The lyrics are great, you know. People ask me what the secret of success is, says, you know, believe what you're doing, you know, who knows where you'll go. Um, great, great message, you know, it's a simple, you know, co- common message, but it still works in the whole concept of the story anyway. Number 56, the cover with his sort of fake band name, uh, Stanley Snail, with, um, or the members of it, it was, um, the guy, uh, the guy with the guy that's with the aristocrats and um, Mike Keneally, I believe. Um, anyway, Siberian Katru or Katru, I I was pronounce it Katru, which is my favorite track off of uh, Close to the Edge itself. Um, and the way that they did this tribute, which was like they wanted to copy it exactly and then add something at the end. They they did a little little bit of Heart of the Sunrise. I didn't stick that many covers on this list because he's got a lot of covers a lot of live covers um but i just think that this one's a properly cleverly recorded and arranged studio recording it still fits i have a few on here but not as many as i could have you know you know you could have half the a a fifth of the list is covered it's kind of you know not really i'm looking to do here but you know it's a slightly different slightly original arrangement of sabir and katru um but i can't think of the bass player you know and Stanley Snail and um, Mike Keneally, Kevin, and then uh, oh, and Nick also, and Brian Beller. That's what I'm trying to think of. Yeah, he's with, he's with the Aristocrats. So number fifty eight, number fifty seven, another cover, El Paso. You know the thing that's nice about this El pa- song, El Paso. It's not a really well known song unless it's certain parts of the, uh, certain cultures. Um. 
but this is a it's a pretty classy cover. Um, they played a lot on KLOS when Kevin and um, some of the people would end up going on there. So um, yeah, I mean it's it's he does the accent a little bit a little bit well, you know, a little bit not so well. I don't know. Um, it still works. It's a it's a nice it's a, it's a nice piece. It's a pop tune, like on sort of a Latin pop tune, pop tune of sorts. You know. Anyway, I think it's like El Paso referencing Mexico or Texas. I'm not sure. You know. I know there's more background to that song that I should know, and they've, I think you talked about it maybe on KLS once. But anyway, I think it goes back to like the '60s. Or maybe in 50s, I'm not sure. Anyway, so number 54, another song that was put on covers, and you know, it's like the the whole Lamb Lies on Broadway Bridge version that he did when he reformed Giraffe for Prague Fest '94. I put Colony of the Slipper Man. I mean, you know, I love the Lamb Lies on Broadway, although I put it further down in my ranking the Peter Gabriel Genesis albums a little bit. But you know, his version is so good. Like, you know, he did. I could have chosen the Cage. I don't, you know, I don't know. You know, this. Maybe I need to re revisit this at some point, just like the metal list, and just remove a, do a, a, a separate covers ranking. But um, it, it's a great cover. It's a great arrangement. That whole thing is just, it's very much wor like loyal to the original, but then it's also still kind of making it his own, if that makes any sense. Um, that turned a lot of minds, changed a lot of minds about Genesis for people that never were into Genesis. Like hearing Kevin Gilbert and his band cover Genesis... It like it, it's like it sounds vintage, but it sounds updated at the same time. A little bit like jellyfish. Anyway, number uh, fifty-three. When you give your your love to me, the opening track off of off of Thud. Um, it's a good song, good lyrical song. You know, it's kind of uplifting. Singer songwriter. Um, there's more than one arrangement on there. You can include the, the the other versions on the. Again, the deluxe the 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 anniversary edition but um um a lot of thud that what makes thud is are the lyrics and that's just not no exception this song i mean there are other songs obviously i enjoy more than this on thud but this doesn't hurt thud the other thing about this is when i don't know if it was it wasn't released as a single i'm surprised it wasn't but when i saw the the champions of nothing perform the shaming of the true they did this, and they were, you know, they did this, they did this first, I think, or, you know, they referenced this as, like, his hit single. This is Johnny Virgil's hit single and all this stuff. So, um, yeah, in some ways, this almost could have been, like, his, you know, All I Want to Do, pretty much, the song that would have sort of represented Thud. I think in some ways, people think of it like the casual fan that might have heard Thud. They think of this because it's the first song. Um, anyway. Decent, yeah, I remember he said this is like a happy song. Most people think my songs are really sad. On, on the, uh, the the live of the True Bar, he says that about it. Uh, Walking in your shoes from Decent Exposure off of the Call Me Kai box set, of course, as well. Good song, energetic song. Uh, definitely has the '80s sheen that he was doing. But um, this is a classic case. This was that Decent Exposure was released right after the year after. Um, uh, the the NRG album. It sounds like it could have been on NRG, but it almost would have been better than a lot of the songs on NRG. If that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I enjoy that. I think that song has a one of the ones that has the, the horn section that works anyway. So number fifty one, we finally get something from Toy Matinee. This is the from the special edition. Also was on, uh, I believe it was Nuts. Blank page. Um, always, I've always been. Moved in a lot of ways how people get moved by Song for a Dead Friend by this song. It's a writer. It sounds like a writer who's trying to write something that is getting writer's block. Um, but it's like frustrating, depressing. Uh, it's very melancholy and sad, but it, you know, it's very slow. It's, it's just a ballad. Um, Kevin just sort of opening himself up, and you know, it, it's it's a great. You know, it's it's like someone trying. I'm trying so hard. I just want to get this to work. You know, here it is. This is all I've got. I'm I'm done. I'm spent. So, blank page from Toy Matinee. Number 50, Lonely Road. Um, the other sort of piano-y ballad from Bolts, I think, of with Taxi Ride. Well, this is, I believe, his own original. And I've always been moved by this song. Um, it's sad and it's soaring and it's um, kind of like someone riding off to the sunset. Like, it's a lonely road. It's a lonely road to home or something like that or to uh, to your destination, to your in your trip. It's... I don't know. It's like someone driving by themselves or taking a trip by themselves. That's why it's a lonely road. 
I don't know. Then again, it gets a metaphor for a lot of stuff, like someone dies and, you know, it's a lonely road to, to live the rest of your life and everything. But I, it's more profound, and I, I, this song moves me a little bit more than some of the other ballads. I mean, his ballads are sort of hit and miss. His best ballads are great. His other ballads are sort of just, eh, they're there. And some people find more from them than others. He has like 30 ballads, at least, like 25 or 30. And this is one of them. This is one of his best. So off of Bolts. Uh, number 50, number 49, Waiting for the Rain. Great energetic tune from The View From Here. One of the other songs that makes The View From Here one of my favorite releases from him. Um, you know, it's just it's a catchy track. Guitar riff is nice. You know, I can't say a lot more about it, but, you know, it's you know it's, it's a little more polished production than some of the stuff off of The Power of Suggestion. Um, you know, but the only thing I think about The View From Here, why I love it, it was an album that sort of got done separate from the band they weren't as much of a band but you know the songwriting was just there um they had a long time to write it that's part of it so anyway number 49 we're 48 ghetto of beautiful things from the shame of the true so another song from the shame of the true uh lyrically this was very dark and sinister but it it sort of he, he hits on all cylinders as getting his point across like you know what this this is not going the way it should have gone you can go you know Fuck them all, this is art. Fuck them all, this is art, you know. Um, it, it, it captures a lot of what he had bottled up, but like some of his feelings about maybe, you know, life, the music industry, and, you know, the character of Johnny Virgil within the story, too, I, I suppose. You know, uh, it wasn't supposed to go this way when I agreed to, to you know, become a rock star, but um, we just gonna, we're just we're going to soar off and, you know, retreat into Norris and New Jersey, you know, but... It's, it, it, it works. It's not over the top the way some of the stuff on Caviar is, although it would have fit really well in on Caviar. So anyway, number 47, another song from Shame and Truth Parade, the opening track, of course, got the line, um, you know, you don't know it yet, but you're going to listen to me. I've been listening to the Beatles, listening to the Who, you don't know it yet, but you're going to listen to me too, you know. Um, it, it's great poetry. It's very much poetic, setting the stage for the story of Johnny Virgil and, and Kevin's story, you know, and um listen to the music inside my head you know it's it's great it's a small it's a, what's small it's a short track it's a good intro track for the story uh and for the album or 47 number 46 never say never super super catchy i love that track um uh, some of kevin's beth vocal lines are in that um and nothing to do with D james bond i don't believe i think the, the never say never came out after that but um i always think of james bond when i see that title it's came out it's on sometimes why one of the other call me kai albums of course um yeah i can't say a lot more about it but it you know it's a song i haven't gotten sick of i've only enjoyed more and more like that and donna ray i probably would you know i should just do i did my top tracks when i was doing that review of call me kai donna ray's never say never would be among the top 15 or 20 probably on there um, an excellent song, Never Say Never. Number 45, All Fall Down uh, from Thud. I, you know, and I, this again is another one. If you include the versions that were on the deluxe, you know, 20th anniversary book, oh man, there's some fantastic. There's one that has an amazing bridge on it. Um, I love this song. I love the uh, sort of the cyni cynical lyricism with it too, you know. Um, yeah, it, it works. It's one of my, you know, it's what, another product of well, the, the the lyrics. Why Kevin worked and worked at those songs, and why there were so, multiple versions are so good. Um, yes, all fall down. It's a terrific song. Number forty five. Number forty four. Turning on Salvador from Toy Matinee. I always think of Julian Lennon. Of course, this is one the song that was based on, and like you know, um, surrealism. The Baklav Baklav Hava, whatever his name is, that. Um, uh, an artist from the Czech Republic. I forget what 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 country in the Eastern Bloc. But um, uh, yeah, it's it's catchy. It's a little quirky. It's almost a little. Um, it has with it. It's like a. I don't know if it's an oboe or a clarinet. Anyway, clarinet. Yeah, da 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 da. And then of course live when they did on uh, on live at the Troubadour. You know he says like or no no on the, the live at the Roxy rather. Um, he starts they start playing around. He's like. You know, we can dance, or what does he say? Uh, he it's it's a playful song live too. Um, I mean, it's not over the top, and again, it features the I was meaning to say the Julian Lennon's vocal harmonies, which he's on another one, but you know, you hear it more clearly on there. So um, yeah, it's a great track. I mean, among the all great songs on, on Toy Matinee. So another one right after that, there was a little boy, which was released as a promotional single. Um, 
sad kind of um, how can you stand with you know a uh, lot of sort of political and social commentary going on in the song. Um, I'm not sure how much of that was Kevin. A lot of it was, and a lot of it might have been some of the other members of Toy Matinee, including of course Patrick Leonard. But um, the live at the Roxy version, I always think of Cheryl. You hear Cheryl's harmonies. There was a li- it's a it's a sad ballad or kind of sad melancholy ballad, you know, but it works like everything on Toy Matinee so well. Um, you know, The Shaming of the True, number 42, a certifiable number one smash. Now, this might be his greatest lyrical song. He kind of riffs uh, about so many political and social things. Um, some of them are slightly dated. It's got, you know, it talks about Tanya Harding nude, you know, um, lacto vegan, non confrontational. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's, he's riffing. He, it's like, it's very, it's not technical singing, but in some ways it sort of is. Um, and of course, it has the whole description of the video, and it's over the top, but it, you know, it's brutally honest. He's not like pulling any punches, um, but it is, you know, it's like this is gonna, you know, make a million dollars, and America's having a blowout sale. And there's a lot of things that just come, you know. I hear this song, I think of it for. Um, I even quoted a lot of it once on a on a forum. It's like a, as a response, like here's a quote: "Take it, you know, do what you will with it." Um, about a smash song, a smash hit, that kind of thing. It's like, it's got more hooks than a tackle box, you know. There's so many just clever lines in this song. I think of it most for the actual lyrics than the actual music, which I still love the music on it. It's got that kind of, I don't know if it's, what kind of riff that is. Uh, it's very bluesy. Dun, 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 dun. You know, but anyway. Number 41, Staring Into Nothing. Now, this is one that, as I came to learn after that, like, there literally are four versions of the song, and the like the most like the giraffe was it the giraffe or no it's NRG and then the two call me Kai versions are the arrangements the, the bridge is a little different but um yeah it works best on the shaming version thank you to Nick De Virgilio Hall's work with that um it's dreamy it's very kind of telling the story of frustration of you know the process of on shaming the true of being going through the rock star lifestyle and um. You know how you're lonely. You know, um, you know, um, you know. I, 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 there's a million wagon people, and I'm lonely. You know, it kind of tells that story. It's a sad story of someone. You know, it's like be careful what you want. It's like you want fame. Fame's gonna give you everything. Fame's just gonna be, you know, the beginning of your problems. You're gonna get, become depressed because of it. You know, so you know, you may have all these people that want to talk to you, but you don't have any, what you really need. Anyway, staring into nothing. It's a terrific track. It's. You know, and it's many incarnations, but the final version, the definitive version on Shaming is the best for me. Uh, number 40, Toy, we, always, we always come home from Toy Matinee. Um, like There Was a Little Boy, this ends the album in very melancholy. Not including Blank Page, but because Blank Page was a bonus track um, on the special edition. But yeah, I mean, it talks about his grandfather and grandmother and you know, where they're buried and what, he's going to be with them someday. It's sort of both happy and sad. I don't know if it, where Kevin was buried. Was he buried with his grandparents? I don't know if his grandparents were... In New Jersey, where he originally was born, or in California, where his family moved to. But um, uh, yeah, it's sort of it's giving. I was giving that message. I think of my grandfather directly thinking about this song sometimes. Someday I'll end up being with them, or wherever I end up being buried. You know, they're right. They're saving a place for me. You know, my parents. You know, they're still around, thankfully. But um, anyway, it's a sad tune, but it's well written, very melancholy. Again. Um, the, the music itself is kind of happy in some ways. It's very uh, kind of uplifting the ending of it. Um, anyway, slow tempo. Number 39, The Best of Everything. Um, a tune that was on, was it Bolts? I think it was Bolts, or maybe, maybe Nuts. I think it was on Nuts, but then it was also released as a single. And was it also, no, um, no, yeah. Anyway, this is another one of those sort of, piano ballads kind of in the sinatra jazz club element i I love it though it's just it's classic it's um kevin's vocal performance he kind of extends himself a bit and you know it's it's a classic almost romantic piece it really is the, the the heart with it fits valentine's day well and um you know if you're in love with someone or something it 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 really works on that in that level um anyway number 38 so one of the only one of the rare uh, live and covers I included on here, the funeral for a friend, love lies bleeding, the Elton John cover they did on the Toy Matinee Live um, album at Live at the Roxy. Uh, yeah, this is terrific. I like Dream Theater's cover, but I remember seeing someone post about they thought that 
that toy matinee, the Kevin Gilbert version is better, and it is. The, <laughs> the solo, the piano solo is terrific That toward the end, and he just, he channels Elton and then brings it to another level, and that's my favorite Elton John song is, over the years I've kind of concluded, so you got to hear it, but I mean, it's just, it's it's off the, the energy's off the chart that he really kind of owns it. It kind of it displays how good Kevin and his band could be live. Um, although a lot of the members that played this were not on the Toy Matinee album, of course. In fact, I don't think there is anyone. Kevin's the only one, I believe. Anyway, number 37, Until I Get Her Back. And there's also Until I Get uh, You Back. But Until I Get Her Back is the one I prefer. Super catchy, you know, um, melodic. Power pop ish, very. Um, when Kevin did Power Pop well, he did it really well. And um, yes, I've always loved this cover on Nuts. I like Until I Get You Back as well. That one he uses more, like, more vocal effects and stuff, but um, the horn section is great in it and everything too. So um, number 37. Number 36, Suit Fugi, Dance of the A. Marmon. A lot of people love this song. It is one of his most classic trademark tracks. It's a uh exercise in studio trickery and, and multi-tracking vocals and um it's a like a tribute to general giant in a lot of ways um yeah i mean it's sarcastic display of the music industry dump the band you know you have those different layers of different a and r men and uh, label reps and stuff like that um and then it's sort of goofy with the, the the horn section and uh what is it like uh accordion and stuff like that so it works on shaming pretty well I don't go back to as much as some people. It's not my suggested first song to hear from him, but it works, and it's it's a song that people can appreciate for good reason. The, the vocals are crazy, you know. The vocal arrangements, the way it's mixed and, and composed uh, and overlaid, like layered, really. Uh, number 35, Joytown. One of my favorite lyrical songs from Kevin, like most of the thud. Um, the references to different people, like Martin Luther King and... Um, uh, Martin Luther King has a blonde night girl girlfriend. Um, Vahala, Vahala, yeah. Um, uh, Moses, you know, it, it's like basically a fancy song about you know the way that if the world were better, this is that that town you could go to. This would be the place where things would be basically at peace and very sublime and you know happy and and joyful and you know a, a good place to exist and spend time. And that's where Kevin is now. He's in Joy Town. So, um, anyway, City of the Sun. Any reference City of the Sun? I didn't even think about it. There's no reference. It says City of the Sun. You know, everyone loves everyone. Uh, it's like City of the Sun and, and Shame in the True. Uh, the Ballad of Jenny Ledge, number 34. A classic single. Kind of a, a ballad of sorts. Slow. Slower. Um, but it's just a highly memorable hook. You know. Da, 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 you know. Uh, of course, it was about um, an Elvis impersonator, <laughs> uh, be, his girlfriend leaving him for an Elvis impersonator. But um, yeah, I, I love I love this song. Yeah, no one of the Toy Matinee classics. Um, it was a single. They did a video for it. it included um, Rosanna Arquette, who he was dating at the time. I mean, he had a bunch of different relationships in a small window of time. But um, yeah, it's uh, you know. A very, it's an uplifting song in some ways, even though it does reference Elvis at the end because the Elvis person, don't be cruel, your, you know, uh, your heart is cr true or whatever like that. To a heart that's true. Um, anyway, number, ironically also, I didn't think about that. The Elvis movie that just came out stars that guy Butler, some Butler, and he, someone said he looked like Kevin, and he kind of does in some ways. <laughs> There's another Elvis connection. Of course, we just lost Lisa Marie Presley too, unfortunately. Anyway, number 33, and she was at the Golden Globes with, and she died two years later. Everyone saw that um, a couple weeks ago. Nuts, uh, Childhood's End, a fantastic, uh, that's another ballad, you know, one of three Childhood's End songs. One, Marillion has one, and um, Pink Floyd has one. But um, this is a dreamy track, you know, emotional, very much, you know, it's, the lyrics fit the song. Kind of retro, very, this, this channeling Kevin's nostalgia and his memories from when he was younger. Um Anyway, yeah, some the keyboard of the Rhodes that's used in that I always liked. I mean, he's used lots of different keyboard patches, but that one specifically on that song. Toy Matinee, the, the Toy Matinee, number 32. Great, uh, another sort of slower piece, talking about being under the, the, the circus, you know, big top and everything like that, and watching that, you know. Um, it's very majestic sounding, um, and there's a lot of things about that song. It's a great sort of self-titled song. Um, well, toy Matinee sounds like, you know, a matinee theater movie, which happened, toys. But 
I don't know how they exactly the the, the origins of the name. You know, I never really even this press release didn't really explain that that in detail from my memory. I've got that press release that came with my vinyl that was in the vinyl rather, but that I got from that guy from Wisconsin. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's a terrific song. Not like energetic song, but you know, like a lot of toy man, a lot of toy matinee songs are a little mid or slower tempo, but they work. But Be- 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 Bella Jenny Ledge isn't even that fast, but um, toy matinee is a slower tempo piece that really works. Number thirty-one, a long day's life from Seeming the True, another slower piece. Um, which I overall tend to favor faster, you know, more up tempo songs, but. That one tells the story about, you know, it's, you know he had this dream, you know, as a painter and everything like that. And it's got like a big slide guitar section. It always reminds me of Pink Floyd in some ways. Um, but um, the narrative in it, and it's sort of just relatable and so sympathetic. It's like, you know, the guy's going to, he's going to drown. Let, let me drown. I'm peaceful here, you know. And, um, it's it, they re, he repeats that phrase though. I had this most disturbing dream. You know, it's like you missed a spot. There's different parts of the song that it's it's kind of a suite in some ways. Actually, I think it's like seven minutes. So anyway, the long long day's life long uh, by, by from Shame of the True number thirty number 30, 31, number thirty Queen of Misery. Now talking about a toy matinee song that's more upbeat, more energetic about Madonna. Um, but yeah, you know. It's, it's talking about this, you know, woman that he kind of fantasizes about or whatever, and think you know she, she, he can't ha- can't actually have a chance to date her or whatever because the way she is, she's the he shouldn't because she's the queen of misery, but she'll break his heart, kind of like in the Weird Al movie in some ways. But um, even though it wasn't based on a true story, it was sort of Weird Al knew Madonna, but um, yeah, Toy Matinee's Queen of Misery is one of the more 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 often went to songs about taking individual tracks off Toy Matinee because of the energy, among other things. Um, when Strangers Part Number Twenty Nine, um, which was on NRG, but then the Nuts version I like even more, cause, mainly because his vocal ra- range he's singing is more natural range, dreamy kind of you know, dreamy track. It, it you know it's got a good bass line. Um, you know, it's eerie. It's got that kind of cloudy, not cloud. Well, cloudy would be the right word. Um, dre- dreamy kind of elements to it. You know, um, but yeah, I've always liked that song. I, the only thing is, I don't think it's long as it could be. You know, I've, you know, I mean, it ended up a little higher than some of these songs because I think of that compilation and just loved it. And so, yeah, I mean, it's it's good. And you know, the version of from Energy is also pretty good. So, number twenty eight, T for one. Now, this is another case of a of a version that's on the. the uh, the anniversary, 20th anniversary version that's awesome. And a T for One's a great tune. And one, one of the songs that he just labored over for that and Tears of Audrey, I remember hearing in one of the interviews, the last interview maybe. Um, but yeah, it's 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 very... Uh, yeah, The Bridge. was well, version on The Bridge is different on one of the versions on um, on the, the anniversary edition. But The Bridge is awesome. But I still like the Thud version a lot because um, it's really moving. Uh, but it's another slow tempo song, so much better than Led Zeppelin's T for One. Having revisited that recently, uh, number twenty-seven, uh, from here to there, I I enjoy this. I just think of you know the, you know the giraffe version and this version are pretty damn close. I still lean towards shaming, but um, it's kind of an escapist piece. It's almost like an interlude in some of the story of the shame and the true. But you know, build me a robot, you teach him the game, you know. It's it's very sympathetic. It's kind of escapist in some ways. Um, yeah, if you could build a robot of yourself to just go live your life, and you wouldn't have to deal with all the stuff that you are frustrated with and that's bringing you down. You know, it'd be a great fantasy, a great outlet, a great escape way to escape your life if you wanted to. You know, a little like the Big Bang Theory episode with Sheldon and the robot. Um, anyway, number twenty six, or like a lot of sci fi actually, like Star Trek. And Kevin was a big Star Trek fan. There were a lot of androids in that. Uh, the world just gets smaller. Very good song, song. Very kind of punchy. You know, Kevin gives it it all sort of on his vocal performance on that. Um, it's got that echo in the world just gets smaller. Da, 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 you know, um, there's not a lot more I can say about this one. It's just I remember the riff is is nice and, and energetic and punchy. Um, yeah, I mean this is a terrific song. Uh, among the better songs that hadn't been released until this com- came out, you know, among all his, his whole vault and everything. But anyway, number 25, uh, The Tears of Audrey. This is another song that has that stark, you know, singer song or a depressive element that was on Thud. Um, um, the guitar riff and the guitar solo in the middle is great. It's like a jazzy kind of thing. I don't know 
who played that? I don't think it was Kevin. Um, Brian, McC- not Brian McLeod, whoever his guitarist was on, on uh, Tim Pierce, maybe? I forget. On Thud. I can just look real quickly if it tells the credits. I don't know if they ever wrote the credits in here. Um, who did play? Maybe it was Kevin's guitar solo. Robert Ferris is a backing vocal on this album. Lyle Workman, maybe? Maybe it was Lyle Workman. Anyway. Tears of Audrey is another one that he labored over and it kind of shows. And again, when you hear the, the different versions, you can see why. Because it's like, how do you ch- pick which one you really like more than the other? <laughs> so that's why it ends up at number 25. Number 24, Masks. Now, I've recently discovered how much I love this song. The version, I think, actually on the Beer Jam, I might like even more. But, um, or on the, the, uh, the archive, one of the KMG archives. But, man, this is some dreamy, progressive stuff. Um, masks. I, I uh, man, I need it. I think this song could go up even more. It's my newest favorite uh, Kevin song, actually. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, when I'm listening to NRG, the original studio version doesn't have this, but there was a one with all the extra tracks that did um, that you can stream. I, I believe on Spotify. So anyway, number twenty three, Goodbye LA, super super catchy. Love the horn section. Um, love the vocal like kind of. In sort of a Jeff Lynne ELO vocal arrangements. Uh, super energetic song. This is an all time favorite. I mean, 23 is really underrating this in a lot of ways from Point Blank from the, the Call Me Kai. Number 22, This Warm Night. Um, awesome, awesome track from the first Giraffe album. Um, very kind of moody, um, dreamy in some ways, you know, and that percussion, that the 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 jungle drumming is just a, one of the many parts of the song that are just wait, makes makes it work so well. Um, a quick chant, just like an accident. Dun, 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 dun. Um, anyway, number twenty one, his version of "Back in New York City." You know, this is the studio version off the Supper's Ready tribute. Of course, he did it also on the the live uh, performing the Lions on Broadway. Um, yeah, the, his version, his studio version here is just off the charts good. He's so he just took Peter Gabriel's arrangement and just went up two or three levels. Some of the layering, some of the extra riffs, you know, the samples from like you know Call Girls and stuff like that, or you know, Prostitutes on the Street, and it's kind of displaying the whole experience that you're getting from that song and you know Rail and the story of the Lamblands on Broadway. Anyway, yeah, I mean, I it's it's not his best cover, but it's pretty damn close. Um, yeah, he kind of made it his own. I preferred over the Genesis Versus version, and the Genesis version is one of my top ten Genesis songs. That's all you need to know. Number twenty, "The City of the Sun," terrific sort of brute, like marching methodical piece. You know, talking about you know Johnny Virgil, Johnny Virgil having his career kind of take off. You know, it's like I'm everywhere. I'm on the billboards. I'm on the sidewalk. I'm on the street. You know, um, welcome to the city. You know. Um, with the megaphone and stuff like that, yeah, it's a ter- it's a terrific sort of another sort of setting the stage song on same same of the true after parade, um, you know. And musically, I like it. It's, and it's not fast, but it, the groove is great to it, uh, among other things. Number nineteen, Rain Sweet, uh, A and B off of NRG. Again, I love uh, Mass. I love uh, Schizophrenia a lot. This is maybe my still my go to. This is per- this is mo- the most sort of progressive with the songwriting you know it's epic in some ways they use samples of rain and everything like that and um of course it also is included on um one of the one of the versions of call me kai i want to say might be on um on uh not point blank the, the first one um i'll have to go up here we're just kind of reviewing it starts with a d <laughs> Uh, decent exposure. I think it's on decent exposure. It's either on decent exposure or on the second one. Anyway, um, yeah, this is this is a you know great great epic piece. You know, and Kevin, you know, so he did more than one version. I gave the energy version the nod, but it's it's splitting hairs. I don't know if there's much of a difference because again, I thought that NRG, especially with that particular track, may not have been on the version that was originally released that people got, or you know, in '84 or '85. So anyway. Uh, waiting from Thud. This one's even better. There's a another a couple versions. The lyrics just are over the top on the the uh, anniversary edition. Um, you know, I, I love what it's kind of speaking to you lyrically, saying it's like waiting for the heroes to to you know do this. Waiting for the you know, it's a lot of political stuff um, 
a renaissance to you know come. Yeah, I'm waiting for things to happen. I'm waiting for this stuff that needs to happen to happen. You know, um, it, it's it. I think it even rocks harder. Some of the other versions rock harder than even the version that finished on Thud. But I've, I've because of it, I appreciate the version on Thud, the the standard version, even more. Anyway. Speaking of the, the, the deluxe version, finally, Big Heart, which was written by Robert Ferris. Um, it's awesome. Big Heart is terrific. Uh, it's a new song. It was from the Thud era. That was part of it. But um, I'm going to tear your big heart apart, you know, whatever it was, that lyric. I, I It's kind of a fun, playful song. He's got a bunch of songs like that. And I just think it works both from a musical and a lyrical standpoint really well. Um, relating to things you love, or relating to people you love, that kind of thing, you know. But it's catchy and energetic. So, number 17. Number 16, Shadow Self, the most progressive song on Thud, at least on the st st standard version of it. Um, the whole Cylon, Belser Galactica overlaid vocals that are really deep and, and dark and everything like that, I always think of this for... Um, it's you know it's very kind of self-reflective and very um, critical. Um, you know, someone who's who's got these thoughts in their head, they're kind of getting all their frustrations out. It's very much a speaking to the frustration that you get in life. This song is is very much a helpful therapeutic thing. I found, even though you know it's not a song to like. You know, if you're in a happy mood, you're gonna put on. But if you're you're having a bad day, it's a song that can help you get through it. Um, and it's it's just very crazy in terms of the vocal arrangement, some of the the tempo is just sped up. Um, it's very kind of angular at times. Number uh, fifteen, shrug because of me and you. Not to, you know, this is not for not be, uh, uh, because of you. Um, but I I've grown to like this song more because of loving because of you from Giraffe. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's got the similar lyrics. Only the dumb bee stings. You know, uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. That kind of stuff. But. It's got a different kind of tempo than the version uh, from Giraffe because it's not a different. It's a different song in a lot of ways. Well, what's the prize? Power suggestion part because of you. The probably well not my favorite, but one of the maybe my favorite song on the Power Suggestion. It's incredibly catchy. It's got the Dotty Dodo element. The energy's off the charts. Um, you know, I, I I've just grown to like this song more and more because of you. Um, you know, how much it has to do with Kevin and the rest of the band. The band had a lot to do with that. But, um, you know, because I don't know what to say, because I don't know what to do. It's a song I can I, I have in my head for days after. In fact, there's a remix version on the version of, on, on the Power of Suggestion, which in some ways I like even more. It's kind of techno-ish, you know. Anyway, um, number 13, Things She Said from Toy Matinee. Uh, incredibly catchy, um... Released as a promotional single, one of four songs from Toy Matinee. Uh, is this the one? No. No, it isn't. Uh, but, yeah, this is, you know, this is another one of those energetic Toy Matinee songs with a lot of little clever layers to it. Um, uh, da 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 Hard as one. Uh, I don't remember all the things she said. You know, it kind of comes back at you in the verse and the choruses. Um, Toy she never let... Um, I think actually the live version might work even better in some ways. A lot of people love that live version more. They love the live at the Roxy or the live Toy Matinee live even more than the studio album. I'm kind of partial. I still lean toward the studio album, but anyway, it's splitting hairs. Remember my name, number number 12. Uh, this is the one I always think of the Sean Astin, Kevin Bacon movie uh, from the late 80s where they're marching through the mountains and at, like on a, on a trail portage camp kind of thing. Um you know, I don't know why it's like, but it lyrically, it's almost like you got to remember my name, just like all these people will remember my name one day, which is sort of happening. And to some people, he remembering his name, how many years, 20 some odd years after he, he died, um, it's like 27 years, whatever it was, 96, uh, will be 27 years this year. But yeah, it's, it's a terrific energetic tr track. It's uplifting kind of, you know, it's, it reminds me also of Tears for Fears in some ways. A lot of the Toy Man A stuff reminds me of Tears for Fears or Vice Versa. Tears for Fears and also um, XTC, the song uh, King for a Day. That This song and King for a Day are very similar in terms of the key they're in, the tempo, but still, both songs are great. Remember my name. Uh, someday we'll remember his name. Remember his name. Remember his name now. The Way Back Home from The Shaming of the True. One of my... It's a song that's grown on me more. I mean, I love the whole album, of course. Uh, it's kind of the end of the story in some ways. They're, you know, finding the way back home. The whole thing with, you know, he 
they find Jesus, you know, and, you know, he says, you've all, you've all heard the answer, but you're not listening. That love is the way back home. Um, it's, and it ends with the guitar solo is really, you know, uplifting. And um, I get goosebumps. I get goosebumps even just thinking about it right now. I love the way back home. Uh, in fact, the lyrics for that song, I have some ideas I'd want to use someday and some other things. But anyway, um, number 10, best laid plans. Even though people say it sounds a lot like Elton John, I don't really hear it that much. I've said this before. It's just crazy, you know, catchy, energetic song. It's like sort of plowing through, getting through the process of, you know, doing the record industry and, you know, uh, finding all these new fans. Uh, these are my plans. These are the best laid plans. Um, it's like, this is what you need to do. You're going to do it, you know, and um, it's it's maybe the most uplifting part of The Shaming of the True in terms of the, the tone, I think of it. There's not really a, a down part of that. It's a fun, you know, it's almost like a party song in some ways. Everyone's a self-made man. Everyone yeah, making such a circus. Sur- although they think of the circus, you know, I've joined the circus mom and dad, you know, but there he's, he sounds really happy about it. You know, it's probably the happiest track on The Shaming of the True. Um, anyway, Goodness Gracious, number nine from Thud. Oh, the lyrics are off the charts on this. They're so great. Um, you know, you know, what horrors would be commonplace when, when you know, was it the thing about when my heart, when my heart starts to gray, you know, goodness gracious, you know, our generation's lost. The baby boomers had it all and, the, you know, uh, they wasted all, uh, I, I'm just kind of thinking of the lyrics in my head, trying to revisit the song. But yes, I mean, goodness gracious is the, some of the lyrics are just super clever on that song. Um, and Kevin's sort of a, a passion vocals, um, yeah, it's just it's it's fantastic. I love uh, goodness gracious. Number eight, finally over you, my wife's favorite and one of her only songs she really likes from Kevin. Um, super catchy, great horn section. Goodbye LA. It's it's like this the song right behind it with that sort of incredibly layered arrangement, but it's power pop too. Da, 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 da. It's like his exploits dating different women and stuff, you know. Um, it's it's really clever and and fun and playful and yeah, it's talking about you know you're, I'm finally over you. I, we're not we're not together anymore. I'm finally over you. I want to let you know, you know. So, um, but yeah, it's just a really it's a really incredibly crafted pop song. Um, number eight from Nuts. Number seven, Air Dance. Super progressive and dreamy, you know. I always think of like a ballerina and stuff like that. Um, uh, it's just, it's, I don't know. I think of Styx as baller, Claire Bar- Ballerina, that song sometimes with it. But um, the piano arrangement, it's just, it's uh, so delicate and um, sublime. Um, this song, I'm just in awe. Of. I bow down to it. Um, one of the best songs by Giraffe. One of the top songs. Right after it, of course, we got Home Progress, which kind of sets the stage for the second giraffe album the view from here um kind of environmental of course talking about giraffes they named the band giraffe and the artwork and everything uh the the like endangered species and stuff like that but the um the opening riff sounds a little bit like close to the edge kevin admit that on kls with or was kls with on stone trek with greg stone uh rest in peace just passed away like last year but um yeah, I mean it's it's that that little riff, that bass line, that do 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 do, you know, um, talking about you know tearing down Parker and Johnson building, and then I think that's off of Joytown, but um, similar kind of aesthetic about uh, got to move these rivers, got to move the um, someday we'll make a big mistake, you know, it, it's 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 highly political, but it it's not so preachy, it's just like kind of. Here I'm giving you a picture of what's happened and what needs to happen. You know, someday you know um, we gotta we gotta stop the sort of environmental process before it's too late. You know, it's it makes you think. You know, and this is whatever 35 years ago and has much changed. The environment's only gotten worse, unfortunately. We need it. We need to do things. We need to change. We are starting to change things, but is it too late? Hopefully, hopefully not. Kevin would probably be saying that right now. Number five, Cashmere, which is. To me, it's his masterpiece cover. It was he did he co-wrote it, but the arrangement. But uh, it was supposed to be on the Encomium Led Zeppelin tribute album, of course. Later, got released and played on the radio a lot on KLS and throughout LA. Um, it's fantastic. It's like a sped up, fast sort of like cashmere on steroids, and it's slightly abridged. It's not the whole thing, but it, it doesn't cover like every bar of cashmere by Zeppelin. But I think he eclipsed it. I think he made it his own. Um, and it's it's unbelievable. Dean Norris of Breaking Bad even tweeted about it a number of years ago. You know, so if you've never heard any other song from Kevin Gilbert, that's one to hear. If you like Led Zeppelin or you like classic rock, it's you you're missing out if you've never heard it. Uh, number four, Image Maker, 
which there's whatever three, two or three versions of it. The shaming of the true, of course, the, the Nick DeVille, Virgilio finish is the the definitive version for me um, with the bridge vocals and stuff. But um, yeah, this is kind of Kevin Gilbert's music in a nutshell. In some ways, um, you know, it's sort of the story and shaming the true of Johnny Virgil talking about how uh, you know making the things he wants to be, you know, turn in, turn into the sort of the rock star that he wants to be in somewhere with it, that the industry wants him to be. Um, uh, but he talks about bullshit and, you know, um, it's, it's the, the arrangement is really fast and, and very tricky. It's, you know, it's very progressive image maker, but I just always would go back to it just for the sort of, sort of the, the phrases and the lines and the version on, um, I believe it's power of suggestion is really good too. Um, but I think it, he, he did, did, did kind of do it even more justice by the version that he did record for Shaming. So, number three, Water Under the Bridge has become my favorite song on Shaming. I just, I get so moved by, you know, the, the, the melancholy of that, you know, it's, it, the guitar solo is really sad, you know, um, water, uh, you know, dirt under my feet, water. I just, I think about Kevin Gilbert's life and I think of this. It's like everything that happened, it's in the past, and it's, it's water under the bridge. you got to move on and do something else. Um, but he's not here to actually have that happen, so it makes it even that much more sad. Kind of like the character in um, in The Shaming of the True Story, too. Johnny Virgil's, you know, it's like, this has happened, things didn't go as planned, you know. It's water under the bridge, but, you know, I'm sort of kind of wallowing a little bit in my sorrows right now, just trying to make some sort of sense of it all. I'm not pissed off, I'm just sad. Um, anyway, number two, last playing out, the song that pretty much supplanted my fandom, the first song, you know, not the first song I ever heard, but the first song on Toy Matinee, and the most successful song on Toy Matinee, uh, super clever pop is the best way to describe it, uh, progressive in a lot of ways, the guitar solo I always have in my head, or the guitar solo or the keyboard, so it's, I get goosebumps always when I hear that, you know, it's like my song, I almost feel like this song is my own in some ways. But um, it's lyrically, it's kind of dark. I, I suppose you know, it's someone who's trying to get out of an area and getting the last plane out before it's too late. But it's like a, like a, I don't know, some natural disaster is about to occur or something like that. But anyway, plants about to blow up, you know, or an island or something. But number one, the tired old man suite, which you know, you include the version that was on Call Me Kai off of um, uh, Point Blank, I believe it is. And it's so, even though some of it reminds me a little of Genesis at points, the, the bazooki or whatever he's playing on that, which reminds me Greg Harridge is, of course, uses bazooki. bazooki. Um, it's, it's so dream that it's well, really well crafted. And you include the, like, Terpsichorean section in the middle. It kind of made it even greater. Um, uh, even though I've heard it a lot the last few years, I've maybe worn it out a bit. I still love it to bits. Um, it's epic. It's his most prog rock song, probably. Um, and it works. It's a little bit like Marillion with Grendel. Is it, you know, Supper's Ready? Yeah, kind of barring for it, but it doesn't matter because it sounds so damn good and I love it. You know, I have a personal bias and, and you know, a fanboy, you know, bias on that. But anyway, that's the whole shebang of 75 songs from Kevin Gilbert. What are your top 10 songs from Kevin Gilbert? I mean, these mean a lot to me. I know he's very obscure. He'll probably never get to be even half as known as he probably should, even at Jeff Buckley's level. But, um, you know, Kevin Gilbert is, you know, his music means just the world to me. And, you know, it's like the day I die, people remember me as a, a massive Kevin Gilbert fan. So, um, but thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, we'll see you next time.